It always comes to this. Hello there guys, back again to do another tattoo progress update today. Uh, where I last left off, I had showed off uh, the work that I've had done uh, in the connecting point here, the red back here, all these little tentacle pieces that we added in behind everything. Uh, those were long left empty and kind of, um, you know, made a lot of difference to get those put in there. We also did a uh, second pass on the red velvet here and some red velvet mixed with black as well to create depth in the red velvet um, kind of like uh, tentacle silhouettes uh, a lot happens if you miss a video on here so I'll always start off with the recaps and especially with how bad algorithms are at kind of keeping people um, up to date on these things and not necessarily that anybody wants to listen to me rant more than once a week even but uh, these these algorithms that are running social media are they're pretty indifferent to the interests that we seem to have and uh, they, they think they know best what we want um, they base that on all kinds of metrics but uh, you simply following my channel and liking tattoos is not enough to ensure that you're going to stay up to date on uh, where I'm at here and if you care about that um, that's why I will frequently start these off with updates um, from the last videos uh, rather than jump right into the new stuff. Um, yeah, all of this is healing up great. So no surprise there. That's going to be the same tonality as what we have more or less down here. This is, what, seven or eight months now that's been done. So it doesn't really change much after that point. But it does start out a little bit brighter and then it fades back a bit. But you can see there isn't too, too much of a transition. Um, where you leave where you leave it is basically where it ends off. This idea that things, they just keep degenerating or something. Most of the mixing happens within the first week or so. It's, it's just the way it is. Like people would like to believe this fantasy that these things just keep vanishing or something. But... The reality is you can only get so much ink into the skin in a single pass and that's why um, doing multiple passes is always better with color on black and really even if you have just full color tattoos doing a second pass is uh, always going to be recommended anyway because again you can only get so much color into the skin in one go and after that if you want it to be bolder, more consistent, and brighter, then a second pass will definitely do that for you. No matter how bulletproof you think your color tattoo is, if it's only been hit once, it can probably be better. With that said, uh, I finally had the session I've been alluding to with Terry this week. Obviously, the thumbnail will have uh, given that away, but um, I didn't want to you know tell people exactly what I was getting into because I didn't need any uh, apprehension on the matter I was doing enough him and hawing over this myself I'll just go ahead and get it up here so we've got a medium tone purple a lighter red and a turquoise uh, mixed with white in the leaves and then we have almost sky blue points um, we did two roses it took around four and a half-ish hours, four hours to do all this. Uh, obviously, we're packing in a ton of color over uh, basically a ton of color. I, I consider what we're doing here, because even though it looks like this is some form of negative space, there's nothing on there that wasn't saturated many times over the blackout that was saturated many times over the color tattoos preceding it which were saturated many times. So we're already dealing with what should be a maxed out uh, amount of ink in the skin. And this is a couple layers of black and a couple layers of white on black. There's places where the white has been done three times in these roses, although most of it is only two passes. 
And what I found with uh, going in, not just on the moon, in some other places as well, over white with color, is the white actually is harder to cover seemingly than black is, and it alters the way that the colors come out. They don't interact the same way with white as they do with black. Um, the white has kind of a gloss finish. Um, everything kind of gets dulled down a, a bit, and uh, so it's it, and it's it tends to pull through better than the black does too. So um, parts of this, for example, um, were bluer yesterday than they are today. Now that was more or less our intention anyway, because and I've been saying this on the Remy reacts. If the people who are watching my vlogs watch Remy reacts, um, in the old days, for different versions of black and gray shading. Uh, high points and low points tattooers would use purple and uh, light blue um, it was commonly believed that white would you know mix with blood and turn pink and at one point believe it or not that sounds insane it's a little like believing in the boogeyman but um, for whatever reason they didn't use uh, pink or they didn't use white because they thought it would go pink so um, this is kind of an homage to that and as this uh, mixes more over the next few days, this being the morning after, for, for context, um, that blue will mix more with the white and it will remain really, really bright. It doesn't really matter in this case if it appears super blue. It does matter to some degree if that stays blue, that turquoise. We wanted it to be kind of a teal look and that's more or less what we got. In here, I, we got a really good result. So I actually expect that that will stay very, very well. The, the worst part of this was uh, we did the, the Ditch Rose second, and there were some spots that were giving Terry a real hard time um, in here, for example, and some of the red and some of the, uh, the purple. All of this said, I actually don't know if this will be, how many passes this will be. I, I assume there'll be more passes, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty typical for anything that I do. It's just that, like, I don't actually know the desired result of, like, richness that, what, how many passes that will take. That will depend on how, um, how it looks after it heals. So, uh, while I can assure that there will be more work done there, that's the only thing I'm certain of. I actually don't have a, a, a clear picture of how many sessions it will take to get these where I want them to be. If they were to stay as they are now, this would probably be good enough because I do want them a little bit darker, believe it or not. I want those high points in there, um, you know, the, the light blue. I want that light, but I want the rest of this fairly dark, not bright, because we already have a bright background with the red. Uh, there will be some people questioning my choice to use red in this, I'm sure. But the red is nowhere, there's just a few spots where it interacts at all with the red uh, background, and it's a different red color. So um, there is still contrast between the red in the rose and the red in uh, the backdrop. This was red velvet, we used really red for this. Both fusion inks, all the inks we use here at the shop are fusion based. Uh, we're not using anything else. So the point in, I'm making there is here we're displaying different tones of, of red. So in the red velvet, we have almost a dark purpley kind of uh, plum burgundy red, whatever you want to call it. Whereas in the really red, it's mixed more, looks like a, an orangey red. So when this darkens, it's and it's going to darken quite a bit. I got to tell you, this, this stuff doesn't ever stay quite as bright as... Um, if you need the memo, it doesn't ever stay as bright as it goes in. We go in bright, um, knowing that as it mixes with the black underneath, it's gonna dull. That's one of those reasons I've been uh, a little bit harsh on uh, another tattooer that's done a few color on black projects um, that uses a muted color palette and then gets a piss poor result. It's like you can't you you can't really afford to use muted tones over black i don't love them to begin with but when you do that um you've already dulled down your color palette as a baseline 
and then you put that under black and then it mixes with the black there's basically no color left um i mean if, if the look you're going for is some distinction and a a take on black and gray that's a good way to get it it'll just kind of look like a pukey swampy kind of black and gray mix that's what will happen uh, i don't want to be the bearer of bad news but when you take dull colors and mix them with black don't expect a great result again i'm not a big fan of dull colors to begin with but it is what it is there's a there's an audience for anything but my my idea of color is it's always been like when you put it in there it should look you know new it shouldn't look 10 years old from the start but um you know teach their own uh they're I'm not knocking the guy's work necessarily, and I'm not even going to name him because it's not useful, but none of this stuff would be showing up if it was looking um, dull when we put it in. It would certainly not be there uh, in a few weeks the way that it is going to be this way. <laughs> Sorry. With all that said, I had some apprehension to do this project. So, to get into that, it's always a case now where I have people, I had another one of these comments and I'm really thinking of going the Joe Rogan route soon here, just not reading the comments at all. That will mean good and bad things. Um, Cause it's been nice. I've interacted with a lot of the comments on my YouTube channel, for example, that I've, I've made a lot of um, acquaintances or friends through that, but I'm thinking more and more as time goes on, I'm going to have to adopt the Joe Rogan route of not answering or replying to or paying any attention to any comments because um, even the, the ardent supporters of my channels and the ones that you would expect to support your decisions more than the ones that don't or whatever, um, even them, when I change my anything on my body there's always blowback and you know i'm at the point in my life and i've been at this point pretty much since i started social media by the way uh where i really don't have time for that bullshit i don't have time for any of that nonsense i'm a husband a father i've been a manager now here at the shop for two years and before that i was running a way higher volume uh um outfit we'll say and I didn't have time for it then, and it's wearing thin on my patience to deal with the nincompoopery of the comment sections. And I've had it said that I do this for attention or I do this so that I can create content or something um, so that I can stay relevant. No, I wanted to do this more or less all along. Where on me do you see black and gray? And my old bodysuit, it was pretty well full color. I considered blackout full color. This is not the look for me, realistically. It was a cool look. I liked the the idea of having a black and gray foreground to a color background, but if you listen to me talk, it's all full color. It's been full color all along. And so this is the natural result. This is what I wanted to do, but was apprehensive of doing. I've been talking about coloring in these thorns since I got them. Now I'm still thinking they're going to probably have to be a dark green or a yellow or a brown or something. We'll get there. I'm not going to touch them right away. But what this, this, uh, the, the main apprehension I had about changing these roses wasn't because I was afraid of doing it for me. It was like, I don't want to deal with the hassle of people who care way more about my body and the way it looks than even I do. It's fucking crazy, but it's not a motivator to do this stuff if, if anything the the negative result and blowback is exhausting and it's i don't really enjoy it and one of the reasons i wouldn't have done this would have been to appease people who are going to be unhappy with it and so that's exactly why i did it because if that's going to be the biggest reason you don't do something in life is because some some amount of morons are going to have an opinion about it that means you should do it it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it it means that the right thing to do is to do it and embrace it because it wasn't fear for me it's just like i don't want to deal with the nuisance it's the same thing when i got the bats on my eyelids and on my youtube channel a bunch of morons revealed themselves 
it's just it's energy I don't need in my life. And you could say if you're putting it online, then you're putting it out there to be judged. Well, you know that's been my uh, that's been my take on it for sure. It's fine that you you can say what you like about it, but then I might just not be there for the negative or positive comments because realistically. I always think that you have the right to state your opinion, but you don't have the right to, um, you know, not get it back. And my my take has been, if you're going to say something crude and hateful, you should be ready to get that back at you. And they never are. Almost any time you respond to one of these, these parasites, the response back is something akin to, oh, well, I must have really hurt you, or... Oh yeah, what some bullshit, um, some bullshit projection or something. It's like, no, I'm not the one spending my time going, you know, hours of my day attacking strangers on social media feeds. What a pathetic way to live. But I'm not going to talk any more about that garbage because those people, I really pity them more than anything, because there's got to be more to life than that. But they're not going to have power over what I do. And I know right away, I already know, as soon as I put this up, this is going to piss off people who like this slave the way it is. But that's anything. It's like so many people are afraid of change that, you know, I've said for years, be, being a supporter of Remy is difficult. Uh, I'm not talking about my third myself in the third person. I consider my fucking channel and my, my presence online um, much akin to, like, a brand or uh, a celebrity playing a role in a movie or something. It's taken on a life of its own. People are more attached to the character than than I am. And uh, people will get things that I've had tattooed on me, tattooed to them and stuff. It takes on a cult-like presence whether you want it to or not. And for anyone who knows me, I'm not that guy. I'm very... Um, I'm very nihilistic in a lot of ways. I don't believe in any of that shit. I don't think you should put anyone on a pedestal. Least of all me. Because I will tell you, I'm not perfect and none of my work is either. That's why I'm constantly working on it. I think it can always be better. And so can everything. We can always get better. You know? And even if it's not always about better, it's we can always get different. You can always change and learn new things and try different stuff and see what works for you and... I feel like the minute you've done that, the minute you've stopped doing that, you may as well be dead. There, there's no point to going on if you're never going to do anything new. There really isn't. And there'll be someone out there with a snarky comment like, you're not doing anything new, you're doing the same thing. You can't stop doing this. You, you're addicted to It's like, well, if there's anything you love in life, you know, have at it, Hoss. We have to suffer through a long life of things we don't enjoy. We do all kinds of things that we don't want to do. If you find something that makes you happy, do it to your heart's content, you know? But keep finding ways to innovate it. Keep finding ways to make it new and fresh again. Like, I've been saying for years that I've been having the most fun with my tattoo journey that I've ever had. That's always true. That it continues to be true because we keep stepping it up. We keep thinking of new things and trying new stuff and Near as I can figure, the only limiter on this is my patience, my uh, my willing my my willfulness to think outside the box, and uh, seemingly it has nothing to do with your skin because this shit shouldn't have been possible here. If you listen to what people are saying, all this should be gone. It hasn't changed at all. You can look back through my videos, you know, uh, and then to go another layer. And same thing with things like this. Or anything that's happening on my torso where we've added God knows how many layers and now Rick and I are going to be heading back to the chest piece and doing more work on that soon here. Um, none of that stuff would be possible conventionally. But as long as you're willing to step outside the established norm and, and figure shit out for yourself instead of listen to the, the, the people I referenced earlier that you know would have us living in caves afraid of fire... As long as you put those guys in your rearview mirror, there really is no limit to what you can do with this medium, and I'm sure that's the case with anything you enjoy in life. So, well, you could argue that I'm not doing something different in earnest, um, 
I am doing something different from a theoretical standpoint with an, um, with a medium that I love, that, or you can say I'm addicted to. You can say whatever you want, but it is creative. It's not. I'm not just ripping my skin off. There's always a result. This was something I've been tossing around in my head since this started. It's not a random development, and it, for me, it's always just about counting down the days and checking off boxes. I've got a million things I want to get to still. I've got more work to do on my torso yet, and I got a whole back piece I'm doing, and this sleeve isn't done, and I want to hit the chest again, and the th like. These are all reasons for me to continue doing what I love doing. You can call it an addiction. That's fine. But as long as it's beneficial to you, and it has been for me, this has been a, a creative, fulfilling part of my life, much more than the social media aspect of it, because I got to tell you guys, this is the worst part of it, is doing these videos, putting them out here, and, and, and dealing with blowback. This is the first part of it that I would drop. I did drop it in 2020. All of social media is the worst part of this. But now, especially, and not because this makes me so much money, but I do feel like there's enough people invested in this project that I so, sort of owe it to continue showing this off. Because if I stop doing this work, the less people see these videos, the less of these projects happen. And the nicest thing that's happened since I've started doing all this shit is I've seen so many people try it. So many people take a chance on it and so many people have good results. Very few people have had bad results. So to be able to inspire that recreation and others and um, people have been sitting with tattoos that they hate for, for decades in some cases and thought, I don't want to go through laser because laser is terrible. There's awful results. I got a, a comment I'll put in here from a woman who had 44 rounds of laser on her chest. She's still not done. Now there's another option for a lot of people, and it's been, it's been a beacon of hope. And uh, even if I made nothing from this, I would still do these videos because right from the start, I, I, I called my blackout a rebirth. It was not the end. Certainly not the end. There's almost no blackout on me anymore, on my torso anyway. And when we get to my legs, it's, it's going to be perfect. We perfected the root there, so it's going to be less struggle. Um, but yeah, even, even from the very beginning, I, I said blackout is a beginning, not an end. And people probably thought that was some metaphor, but I was very serious. You can go back and find that video. That's me telling the story of blacking out a tattoo that I had bad memories with. It wasn't a bad tattoo, but that there was, there was kind of a new life afterwards too. So anyway, I've talked enough about that. Uh, really had a lot to get off my chest with this. I expect some people to be unhappy with the direction as they always are. And I'm just wondering now if I even care to engage with that because I'm not gonna let that shit influence my direction on the project because so often is the case that there are things that I would like to do and now I'm I'm hedging my bets on whether or not people are going to like it and that's not the right way to do things it's more it should always be honest you should always be going in the direction you want and don't let the opinions of your followers or whoever else to influence your decision making on your own body and I think more people do than you would think. So it sounds like a crazy thing to say, but I'm seeing a lot of that happening these days. And it's very important to make sure that you're in control of your project and don't let anyone else influence it. All right. Well, I'll talk to you guys again soon. Have a great day.